Look at all these tabs. I've got documentation after documentation, YouTube video tutorials. I've got Stack Overflow, you name it. I went through the ringer to try to figure out how to actually use AWS to host a website where I've purchased a domain through Namecheap. I guess that part doesn't matter. You can use whatever domain you want. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you all the steps, all inclusive of how to set up and host your own website through AWS. This is our wonderful example website that we're going to use. This was purchased through Namecheap, very inexpensive, but definitely worth it to show you all how to do this. So you're going to need, of course, your own domain name purchased wherever. And then of course, you're going to need your AWS account. To get started with AWS, we need to tell AWS that yes, we do in fact own this domain name. So to do that, you're going to go up to certificate manager in the console. If I can type. Okay. And you might use this in the future. If you want to, you can favorite it. Every time you click this little star, it's going to drop these into the navigation bar, which definitely makes things a little bit easier. Now here, it's very important that when you create a certificate, you want your region to be set to North Virginia, because this is going to have an impact on whether or not you get to use SSL in the future, because it's only going to accept certificates that were issued by North Virginia. All right, so we're going to in here, we're going to click request, request a public certificate, click next, fully qualified domain name needs to match this exactly. All right. told us to remove the trailing white spaces. We were going to anyways, but it made sure we're not stupid. We need add another name. So this is our base. This is with no subdomains. We need a second. For this, I'm going to use a wildcard. Asterisk or star dot sample XYZ. Remove the trailing white space. This will allow us to use a certificate for www or if, you, if you've got big plans for your website, you can have other subdomains such as app.sampleXYZ or maps.xyz. You, you know, you get the picture. So you need to have at least the sample XYZ, but to future proof it, I suggest using this star dot sample XYZ. DNS validation. I don't use any tags. Hit request. Now you go back into here, click on your certificate ID. And these are blank, but that's because Amazon is sometimes stupid, doesn't load everything up. There we go. Now you notice that these are two exactly the same, you know, both of these things, but we're, so we only need to be concerned with one. So over in Namecheap, you want to go to advanced DNS. And of course, you're going to have to figure out where to do this if you're using something other than Namecheap. And under host records, this has an old one where I screwed up, so we're going to delete that. And if this was new to you, you would have two records here, but you can delete everything under host records. Now we just need to add a new, and this is going to be a CNAME record. And for the host field here, the only thing you're putting in this is from the underscore up to, but not including this first period. All right, so you can choose all this, copy that, put paste that into the host. And for the value, you're gonna use this entire CNAME value from AWS, so you can just click this little link, paste it into target, drop this down to one minute, choose a check mark, and now that's there. Now this is just a waiting game. So with the beautiful and wonderful power of editing, we'll be back in a second. And we're back. As you can see, we now have status of success on both of these. The next step we want to do is set up our domain for us in this example, it would be through Namecheap to have the name servers of our AWS account. But before we do that, we need to actually create them. So go to route 53. And you're going to use this again, so click on the star to add it here. And you're going to click on hosted zone, create a hosted zone. And now that needs to be exactly as your domain. 
take off the trailing white space. You can add a description if you want. It's gonna be a public hosted zone. I don't use any tags. Create the hosted zone. Now, you see these four records here. If we go back into Namecheap and click on domain of our sample example, down here under name servers, instead of Namecheap basic DNS, you're gonna click on it and choose custom DNS. And you're gonna add a couple lines because you need four of them. And you're gonna copy these exactly all over here. Once that's done, click on save. It says it can take up to 48 hours to take effect. And that's not gonna stop us from proceeding with this tutorial, but keep in mind that in the end, when we want to start looking at our website, if this hasn't propagated yet, you're not gonna have any luck seeing your website. Just keep that in mind, okay? Now, the next thing we wanna do is create some buckets to host our actual website. So we go to S3. And again, you're gonna be jumping back and forth between S3, so click on the favorite. By now, you know how to access these various elements of AWS, so I'm just gonna start using my favorites. Now, you see with my current website, I've got two buckets. In terms of how the intrawebs works, these are two entirely different websites because you have project3.io and then you have subdomain www.project3.io. This is similar to maps.google.com or docs.google.com, so on and so forth. So we need to create two buckets and you need to figure out which one you want to serve as your base bucket. In my case, I'm using project three, that's got the, all my files into it. So if I create a bucket here, this is going to be, oops, not gonna be that, that's a name server. Let's copy this. Now it's, you wanna make sure you don't have any trailing white spaces. I'm gonna keep the region to North Virginia, just to keep everything the same. No, I'm gonna choose this ACLS, disabled. Block public access for this bucket, I'm choosing to block all public access. This might sound confusing, but we're gonna use CloudFront to manage this access. So it doesn't matter right here if we're choosing to block it. In fact, it does, but just keep it blocked. Uh, no, no bucket versioning for me, and I've got the rest of these settings as such. Create bucket. Now, since that one is going to serve as our base, I'm going to go back into this one, sample example, and now I want to upload my documents. Okay, so here's the documents, just very basic. We can drag and drop them in. I'll we'll just keep everything like this and upload. We can close this. Now up in properties, I'm just gonna quickly scroll all the way to the bottom. Everything else I'm not touching except for static website hosting. Click edit, going to enable. And this we're going to choose host a static website, index. HTML, I continue to be unable to type correctly. And the rest is the same, so save changes. Now we can go back to Amazon S3. Now we're going to create the www version of the bucket. So www and then sample XYZ, North Virginia, choosing the object ownership as recommended, blocking all public access, and the rest here I'm leaving alone. Let's create the bucket. Okay, now I'm going into the www portion of this. Not uploading anything here because this is not our base website. We are going to use the www version to redirect traffic to the non-WWW version. So in here in properties, scroll all the way to the bottom, static website hosting, choose edit. We're going to enable, but instead of host a static website, we're going to redirect requests. And we're gonna redirect them to sampleexample.xyz using HTTPS protocol. Save the changes. Okay, 
Now that we have that set up, we need to create a CloudFront distribution. So you can go up here and type in CloudFront, or for me, I'm just going to click on the favorite. Okay, I have, an, I have an existing distribution. Now we need to create a distribution. Okay, the origin domain. Actually, we, let's delete this. You should see it in your drop down. Now that you've created your buckets, you have these other ones. So I'm going to choose the base one here, sample example. It pre-populates the name for us. Here we want to choose yes, use OA, OAI, okay? And now create, so let's create a new one. Hit create, XYZS3, create, okay? So that's there. And then we want, yes, update the bucket policy. This is where we're going to tell CloudFront that yes, it can update the bucket policy, all right? Scroll down here, we don't, we don't want, we say no to this. We want to compress the objects automatically, redirect HTTP to HTTPS, and cache policy, we're going to leave it alone. And then, I think there was another area here, yes. Okay, so use all edge locations. You're gonna have to look into this yourself. There's some differences in payment options, but for the sake of brevity in this tutorial, I'm just gonna use all edge locations. Full disclosure, this is what I'm using for my personal stuff anyways. Alternate domain name, this is important, okay? This is where we're gonna use sampleexample.xyz, and then I'm going to use www.sampleexample, okay? Now, if in the certificate manager portion, you only had created this one, that's all you'd be able allowed to use here. You wouldn't be able to use www or anything else. Because we use the asterisk dot sample example, this is going to allow us to do that. So we're just gonna leave it these two. This is all we need for now for this one. This custom SSL certificate, here's where I said you need to create the certificate under North Virginia because it says here it must be in US East North Virginia. So that's sample example. That's the one we have. And because I don't want to pay 600 a month and prorated charges apply, I'm not going to enable that. I am just going to keep this recommended, this here, default root, index HTML, and logging is off. IPv6, I'm keeping on. And you need to remember that when we go back into Route 53, because it has to do with how many new records we have to create. If you choose this to be on, you have to create two additional records, but it's, it's really no big deal. And in fact, I suggest keeping this on. So now we create distribution. Okay, now this is where every other tutorial I've seen gets hung up. If you were to proceed with the rest of what you've seen on the internet, this wouldn't load up correctly. In fact, it would load up an XML error document. So what you have to do is you have to go back into S3 and go to your naked domain, sample example, and then under properties, I'm going all the way to the bottom and I'm going to copy this bucket website endpoint, okay? Now, go back to CloudFront, click on your distribution, choose origins. Now you want to create an origin. The domain name is going to be this, paste it in, okay? Just paste it in. <laughs> Leave this the same, leave this the same. Don't worry about this. Origin path, don't touch it. Create origin. That is probably the most important part of this entire tutorial and why I got stuck on my own website, okay? But that was the fix, that worked here, okay? Now our current website is hosted at this funny looking address. If we go up here, and it might not work until it's fully deployed. 
No, it does. Sample example, look at that rock and roll website, okay? But you don't want user, you don't want to say, hey, go to my website, D2U2ZV. I mean, that sounds pretty cool Star Wars wise, but no way, nobody's gonna remember that. Now we're gonna take care of that. Go back to Route 53. You're gonna go back into your hosted zones. You're going to click on your sample example or whatever yours is, of course. Now I wanna create a record. Now we have quick create record. Say that fast, quick create record, quick create record. All right, if you see this view instead, just click this, switch to quick create. Now we need to create four records because remember we had the IPv6 enabled. If we only had IPv4, then we'd only have to create two, but because of that, we have to create four. And we're going to do the naked domain first. So we're not gonna put anything here in record name. We're gonna take care of the IPv4, which is a record type of A. Turn this alias to on, choose the endpoint. We're going to choose alias to CloudFront distribution. And the distribution is this QSRX, this end here. If you wanna verify that, just go back into when you originally opened the website and you can see here that it's ending in QSRX. Now we know that that's correct. We want simple routing and evaluate target health to know. I'm gonna add another record. Now we choose this four A's, click alias on, endpoint, alias to CloudFront distribution, and it's again this one, okay? Now we're adding another record. So now we've got the IPv4 and the IPv6 taken care of for the, for the naked domains. Add another record. Now we're gonna type www. We don't need to type the dot here at the end because you notice that if you didn't have anything here, there's no dot here, but now we add it, then it automatically adds it. Okay, so we're doing the IPv4 version of www. Tick on alias. The endpoint is alias to CloudFront distribution. And it's the same here again. Simple routing, simple routing is gonna be for everything. No target health as well. Add another record. Down here, www. We're gonna choose the IPv6 routing. Turn on alias, endpoint, CloudFront distribution. We're gonna choose our distribution. Okay, simple routing, no here. And create records. Now we've got four different records. We've got the A and four A's for everything here. So you've noticed that the record name is going to take sample example and it's gonna forward route traffic to this one. Now, if you wanted to verify this is all taken effect, let's go into a new incognito window and we're going to do sample example.xyz. There we go, sample example XYZ. Let's open a new tab. Let's try it without the www. And there we go. Everything is propagated. We can go to sample example at XYZ or the www and it redirects us where we want to go. If by this point yours still isn't loading, remember that propagation can be up to 48 hours. If it's still not working by then, I suggest rewatching this tutorial, making sure that you didn't miss anything. You can leave a comment down below. I can't guarantee I'm gonna be able to help you out or answer your question because there might be variables that I am not knowledgeable about. For example, if you're using something other than Namecheap, I won't be able to help you there. But if you just Google Stack Overflow, whatever, what your problem is, you might be able to find out an answer. But if not, give it some time, let propagation take effect, and chances are that is the main reason why you're not seeing any results yet. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you got something from it and you were able to set up your site correctly and got it to show up, smash that like button. Consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.